Did you know how the heart contracts? This video explains it. Each myofibrils has thin and thick filaments. The thin filament is called actin, and the thick filaments are called myosin. The portion of myofibril between two Z-lines are called sarcomere. In light microscope myofibrils has light and dark bands. The dark bands are called A-bands. In this area thick filaments line up with thin filaments. The light bands are due to actin filaments, and it is called I-band. Let's zoom in further to see the molecular structure of thin and thick filaments. The thin filament consists of double helix of actin molecules. Between the groove of two chains of actin lies the tropomyosin. It covers the myosin binding site of actin. Thin filament also contains troponin. It has three subunits. Troponin T, binds the other subunits to tropomyosin. Troponin I, and troponin C, contains binding site for calcium. Thick filament consists of myosin molecules. Myosin molecule consists of light and heavy chains. The light chains combine with terminal part of heavy chain to form head of myosin molecule. The myosin head is at high energy at relaxed state due to ADP and inorganic phosphate. Let's zoom out for a while. For ease of understanding, we will focus on one sarcomere. Let's put this sarcomere inside sarcoplasm. Containing the longitudinal sarcoplasmic reticulum or the L-tubule. The T-tubule contains voltage-gated calcium channels, it is associated with dihydropyridine receptor. And L-tubules also contains voltage-gated calcium channels, it is associated with rheonidine receptor. L-tubules also has ADP-mediated calcium pump, to pump the sarcoplasmic calcium back in. The sarcolemma also has other channels like, ADP-mediated calcium pump, which pumps calcium out into extracellular fluid, a sodium-potassium pump, and sodium-calcium exchanger, which allows three sodium in and one calcium out along the concentration gradient. T-tubules contains extracellular fluid, so it contains calcium, and L-tubules are also rich in calcium. When depolarization occur, the voltage-gated calcium channel opens and allows calcium from extracellular fluid to enter sarcoplasm. This intracellular calcium activates the voltage-gated calcium channel in terminal cisterns of L-tubules, so there is increase in calcium concentration in sarcoplasm. These calcium then bind to troponin C and starts the process of excitation, contraction coupling. The calcium binding to troponin C causes tropomyosin molecule to move laterally. Thus myosin binding sites on actin molecule are uncovered. The already energized myosin head attaches to actin, thus forming cross bridges. Then the myosin head moves towards the center of myosin molecule by utilizing the energy released from ADP and inorganic phosphate split, this action is called power stroke. As the energy is utilized the ADP and inorganic phosphate are released. And when next ADP is attached to the myosin head, it unbinds from the actin and comes to its relaxed state. ADP is then hydrolyzed by myosin head into ADP and inorganic phosphate. As long as the calcium is bound to the troponin C, the cross bridging and the power stroke repeats. Thus causing further sliding of actin filaments over myosin leading to further muscle contraction. As the repolarization occurs, the calcium is taken back into the L-tubules and also expelled into extracellular fluid, thus causing muscle relaxation. The entire step repeats as the next depolarization occurs. It should be noted that during muscle contraction the A-band remains the same. It is the I-band which gets shortened. It shows that the muscle contraction is due to the sliding in of actin filaments over the myosin molecules.